Google techie Komal Singh was taken aback by her four-year-old daughter's assumption that all engineers are men. So she decided to do something about that. She joined forces with a group of Googlers and wrote Ara, the Star Engineer. It's a book aimed at children ages five to nine and inspires kids to explore STEM subjects. And she's here to tell us more about it. Welcome to What She Said. Hello. Thank you for having me. Well, first of all, tell us about your role at Google. Yes. Um, so at Google, I work as a program manager within engineering. Um, mm-hmm. I've been here for about three years. Prior to Google, I've been working in the tech sector for almost uh, 13 years. I'm a software engineer by background, and I've held various um, roles um, as a programmer, a developer, a delivery lead, um, program manager. And um, here at Google, I work some with some amazing folks building amazing things and products for the world. So tell us again why you decided to do this. Yes. Um, so I have two children. I have a daughter who is five now. And when I started the book at that time, she was four. And I have a boy who is now one. And um, I was working from home one day. I happened to be on a video conferencing call. And she could see the faces of people who were on the call. And then she would ask me, who's that person? And what does that person do? And I would go, oh, yes, that's Alex. He's an engineer. That's Mike, my manager. He's an engineer. That's Kurt. Um, and it was 10 people. And they were all men and all engineers. Um, and by the end of it, she goes to me, oh, mama, engineers are boys, isn't it? So when she said that, I was pretty bummed out. Um, and given, then, given that you are yeah, one. Yeah. Given that Did I you say mummy is an engineer? Uh, well, she knows that, but I guess she needed the a optics. lot of reiteration. Yeah. And, um, and when I started researching more, it turns out that, you know, girls, there's well-established research out there that girls start doubting their intelligence in STEM as early as six years old. And it turns out, you would be surprised to know this, that children's literature, especially picture books, less than 5% picture books are actually authored by people of color or feature people of color in leading roles as protagonists in books. Um, and so I thought that there was an opportunity to introduce engineering and STEM and science to kids in a very whimsical manner mm-hmm. by showcasing the diversity that we we have, even though limited diversity um, is what we have right now. But um, I thought it would be a great idea to encourage them and inspire them through picture books. I, I find it fascinating that, that there's, I, I sort of still get because of my age that, that people think of you know, even mm-hmm. doctors or engineers or, a, as men. But I'm surprised that only 5% of books feature people of color. That's right. Um, and this was a research that was published recently by The Guardian. Mm-hmm. And I bet, you know, a number of uh, books re- related to STEM or engineering are even less than 5%. Probably we're looking at something that's even less than like 1%, I would imagine. Okay, so So, tell us about Ara, the Star Engineer. Yes, so Ara, the Star Engineer is a picture book that um, features a young girl called Ara and her sidekick droid, Didi, on an adventure to count all the stars in the sky. And in doing so, what they do is they visit a fantastical land of innovation Plex, which is actually inspired by Google Plex, um, and that's the Google headquarters. Mm -hmm. Um, They visit innovation Plex, and then they enlist the help of real-life women engineers to solve their problem. And in doing so, they discover an algorithm of success that's comprised of the four Cs. That's courage, creativity, coding, and collaboration. And um, in using these four Cs uh, or keys of success. They are able to solve their problem um, and count all the stars in the sky while having fun and while meeting a very diverse set of real life role models. Now, it's not just a book, though. It's It's been turn into an app that connects with these yeah. fascinating um <laughs> fascinating goggles. That's correct. Um, So we wanted the book to be more than just a book. We wanted the adventure to continue beyond the book for children. So there is the website of the book, which is arastarengineer.com. And um, we have a number of activity sheets for children to download and a number of other learning resources for parents, teachers, and kids um, to play with. But besides that, the book has also been converted to an immersive um, 3D experience, which can be viewed using um, any VR glass, a virtual reality glass, um, 
and uh, using Google Expeditions, and it's all free to download and view. So, you know, kids can actually see in a very realistic manner what a data center looks like, you know, how huge a data center can be. Um, so I think such visualizations go a long way in sparking their imagination and curiosity. But it seems to me that this book would inspire boys as well as girls. I mean, it really is for everyone. It is for everybody. I, it's not just for girls. It's for boys and girls and other non-binary genders and also not just for kids. One of the things I constantly hear from parents and teachers is how much they themselves learned from the book. So, yes, it's for all genders and all ages, not just children or girls. Well, of course, it begs the question. There must be another one. I Yes, there will be another one. And we're actively seeking feedback from our readers and fans on what is it that they would like to see more about. Um, so, yes, if you have thoughts, questions, email us. What do you get from uh, – what kind of reaction do you get from teachers? Because I think teachers, you know, try very hard. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to influence – um, yes. the optics for children of certain things. Yes. Um, so children, I mean, teachers and parents both are delighted by the book because, you know, it's not an academic book that teaches you how to code. That's not what it is. But it actually does introduce coding concepts, but in a very playful manner. Um, and um, that's what people find very endearing, that they can talk to kids about algorithms, but in a fun manner. You know, we can write algorithms to brush our teeth or algorithm to go to school. And some of the teachers Teachers have told me that um, the kids are writing their own algorithms to feed the cat. So, you know, when kids are already thinking of breaking a big problem into smaller problems, that's kind of that's kind of like computational thinking 101. Did this sort of exceed your wildest expectations? It did. I will not lie. It did. You know, my whole effort was just focused on getting a good book out that for um, your daughter for not. Yes. Initially, my daughter, but then I realized that the cause was much bigger than my daughter. It became a cause. Um, so I wanted to get a good book out. But since then, the response has been just overwhelming. Um, the book is being converted to about 10 other languages um, in 10 other countries. Um, and um, so many other groups stepped up to help me out with things like the activities and the, the immersive experiences. Um, and the response and the fan mail and the letters that I get from teachers and children is just amazing. So we want to make it clear, though, that this book is not an official product of Google. That's correct. But it's not an official product of Google. But um, Googlers helped you and Google helped yes, you, too. Googlers, uh, my peers helped me out. And, and like I mentioned, they helped me with things such as building the website, helping me with activity sheets, um, coding the VR experience for the book. Um, so I had a lot of help. I love some of the um, characters and their names. The tenacious troubleshooter, the code commander, the prolific planner, and the intrepid innovator. I mean, you've given them such great handles yeah. of what they do. You know, we wanted to introduce um, uh, kids to titles such as vice presidents and directors in engineering, but through a, a, a fun bridge. So we thought, you know, what is it that these VPs and directors and techies do? Well, they, they, they solve problems, so they're prolific problem solvers. And uh, most of the time is, is um, spent around troubleshooting problems, right, or troubleshooting things and refactoring code. So that takes a lot of persistence. So the tenacious troubleshooter. And um, you have to come up with bright ideas to old problems so that you can solve them in a novel manner. So that's the intrepid innovator. And then the code commander um, is is nothing but a way to speak with computers and to um, you know make computers understand um, what you want them to do, and hence the code commander. Has, does your daughter get it now? She gets it. She's very inspired to solve problems. You know, I haven't quite heard her say, I want to be an engineer, but I've heard her say, <laughs> I'm a problem solver and I can troubleshoot this. I can fix it. So I think it has really boosted her confidence. Um, and, you know, the aim of the book is not to convert children to be engineers, which would be really awesome, by the way, but to convert them to think themselves to be problem solvers mm -hmm. and troubleshooters and fixers of things and creators, not just consumers. But right? also so. able, anything is within their reach if they want it. Yes. If they want to do that, then nothing would stop them. Yes, absolutely. So, Kamal, where can people go to get a copy of Our Other Star Engineer? So, the book can be um, bought on Amazon mm -hmm. or any bookstore, such as uh, Chapters or any of the indie mm -hmm. bookstores as well. 
That's excellent. Thank you so, so much for joining us today and, and for doing this. I think. Yes, yeah. I think it's amazing. It's my pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, she said-